Good afternoon and thank you for inviting me to talk about primary CNS lymphoma. Uh, primary CNS lymphoma is an non-Hodgkin lymphoma located mostly in the brain, uh, but also in the meninges and in the eye in about 15 to 20 percent of patients. And the location of the spinal cord is very rare, and all this is without any systemic location. Um, nowadays, the only identified risk factor is immunodeficiency. Uh, due to HIV virus or immunosuppressive therapy, but currently immunocompetent patients are far more numerous than immunocompromised patients. Uh, the many, median age at diagnosis is rather high, about 70 years, with a sex ratio about one, and it's a rare tumor accounting for less than 5% of non-Hodgkin lymphomas and less than 5% of primary cerebral tumors. As the symptoms at diagnosis are non-specific symptoms, symptoms that we can see in all um, cerebral tumors. Uh, to note that uh, epilepsy is rather rare in the tumor. Uh, it is always important to find uh, to, to look for ocular symptoms that uh, are uh, generally mild, and uh, there are uh, little changes in general condition in most cases. Um, the onset of the symptoms is subacute with median delay between first symptoms and diagnosis of a few weeks generally, and uh, um, the disease that progresses rapidly with frequent disability at diagnosis. Uh, regarding uh, MRI fetches, uh, the typical uh, fetches is a tumor uh, located uh, deeply in the brain in uh, periventricular areas or like here, aspect of ventriculitis. And uh, what is typical is this intense and homogeneous uh, contrast enhancement like snowball or cotton. The le lesion might, uh, might be uh, unique in half of the patients or multiple in half of the patients with a very variable edema. Um, there are also atypical radiological features in uh, some patients. And the, the, the first thing that can, that can be difficult is when there is a lack of contrast enhancement. For instance, uh, in this focal lesion, uh, the contrast enhancement, or uh, more difficult, uh, diffuse lesions without contrast enhancement and an aspect of local encephalopathy corresponding to what we call uh, lymphomatosis cerebri with um, on the histology spread CD20 positive tumoral lymphocytes. Other atypical radiological features with this uh, pseudomeningioma uh, lesion uh, corresponding to a uh, particular uh, histopathology, which is dural marginal zone lymphoma with those uh, little lymphocytes. Um, MRI is uh, generally atypical in immunocompromised patients with uh, this ring enhancement uh, and not an homogeneous and uh, intense enhancement as we have seen before with a numerous differential diagnosis with infections and especially uh, toxoplasmosis, which can be very difficult. An example of intravascular lymphoma. Uh, with this patient with history of repeated strokes uh, uh, and um, lesion in uh, hypersignal hyper in diffusion uh, corresponding to intravascular proliferation of the uh, lymphomatous B cell. Also interesting is that uh, when uh, patients uh, take steroids, uh, the MRI often uh, become uh, uh, atypical uh, with uh, this example very typical before steroids and atypical after steroids. Uh, spectroscopy, perfusion and diffusion are uh, very interesting um, to help the diagnosis um, of cerebral lymphoma. Uh, regarding spectroscopy, we have an increase of choline, decrease of n acetylaspartate and uh, very often the peaks of lipids in uh, diffusion. We have uh, generally, uh, diffusion hypersignal with no apparent diffusion coefficient. And uh, perfusion is also very interesting with um, a typical aspect, not specific, but typical, 
uh, of this upslope linked to a capillary leakage uh, due to the blood-brain barrier disruption in the disease. And all those sequences uh, might help us uh, to differentiate uh, brain lymphoma from other lesions and especially uh, malignant gliomas. Uh, so what to do with a lesion suggestive of lymphoma? The first thing is not to give steroids, except, of course, uh, if there is threatening intracranial hypertension. Uh, because what can happen? Like in this patient, we have lesion evoking uh, lymphoma. This very nice partial response just before um, biopsy. And the result of biopsy, no lymphomatous cells. What, what do we have to do in, in those cases where well, there is no emergency? So the better is uh, not to biopsy this patient, stop steroids and follow the patient closely. And um, the most probable is that the tumor will regrow a few, in a few weeks and, or a few months and then can do biopsy. Uh, the second thing is that despite radiological improvement, the diagnosis remains histological. And brain biopsy is mandatory, except in two cases. In those two cases, we have to have a typical brain MRI and either an ocular involvement with lymphomatocells in the vitrectomy or a meningeal involvement with lymphomatocells in the lumbar puncture. So try to do both things, lumbar puncture and ophthalmological examination quickly before brain biopsy. A few words on ophthalmological assessment. The basic thing is to do slit lamp and fundus examination. If it's normal, that's all. And if it's not normal, it can be completed by angiography, OCT, or Ontario chamber puncture, and a vitrectomy if um, the assessment is suggestive of lymphoma. The vitrectomy will then be analyzed with cytology, with phenotyping, molecular clinality, and dosage of cytokines, uh, IL-10 and IL-6. A few words in CSF assessment. So there is usually a mild uh, elevated CSF cell count with mild increase of CSF proteins and normal CSF glucose. And lymphomatous cells are found only in 10 to 20% in conventional cytology. So we have to use special tools to improve the diagnosis of meningeal involvement and especially in lymphocytes in the phenotyping by flow cytometry and also molecular criminality assessment by PCR. The other interesting thing in the CSF is the development of uh, several biomarkers that are uh, summarized here in this table. We'll focus only on one, uh, which is the most uh, studied one, which is uh, CSF IL-10. Uh, the increase of IL-10 in CSF has a sensitivity and a specificity of almost 90% for the diagnosis of cerebral lymphoma. Here an example, two patients with lesions evoking uh, lymphoma. In the first one, I attend very uh, elevated and detectable. In the second one, the first one was, in fact, cerebral lymphoma, and the second one, a glioblastoma. Um, histopathological diagnosis uh, is not so difficult in most of cases, except uh, for uh, patients who are uh, on steroids, as we told before. Uh, the diagnosis is quite homogeneous with more than 90% of uh, diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Uh, interesting, the, the tumor is EBV negative in immunocompetent patients and EBV positive in immunocompromised patients. And we can find also a few cases of T-cell lymphoma and other types of B-cell lymphomas. Um, once uh, we have the diagnosis of lymphoma, um, there must be an assessment to exclude systemic lymphoma with um, two important uh, exams, full body CT scan and FDG PET scan. Um, this um, workup will be positive in less than 10% of, pa uh, of patients, so it is important not to delay too much the beginning of the treatment in uh, that uh, disease that progresses very rapidly. But if it is positive, the treatment will be very different. Um, let's talk now about uh, the treatment of the disease and uh, a few words on the principle of treatments. The first thing is that it is a diffuse uh, tumor so that local treatments are not efficient. So we forget surgery and focal radiotherapy to concentrate on chemotherapy and whole brain radiotherapy. 
Uh, second thing, it is very uh, common radiosensitive tumor, not like uh, gliomas. Uh, so we have very frequently what we have in these elderly patients. It is 40 to 60 percent of complete response after high dose matrix based chemotherapy. There is often uh, an important improvement in um, neurological status of the patients. So I think it is worth treating all newly diagnosed patients, even if they are elderly and disabled. Um, historically, whole brain radiotherapy was the first used treatment of the disease. But as we can see in that RTOG trial, uh, radiotherapy alone is not efficient with um, many relapses despite uh, high radiosensitivity at the beginning and the failure of our survival, very disappointing, uh, inferior to 5%. Um, for chemotherapy, the, the problem initially was the problem of the blood-brain barrier, so that conventional protocols like SHOP are used in systemic lymphomas are not efficient. So we have to use uh, chemotherapy that can cross the blood-brain barrier. And the most important one is high-dose metotrexate. Uh, we have also high-dose cytarabine, nitrosourea, temozolomide, etc., and so on. A few words on metotrexate. It is a key drug in cerebral lymphoma. It is used intravenous at very high dose with an important nephrotoxicity. Uh, so we need um, for the patient alkaline hyperhydration, um, with um, duration of hospitalization that are often uh, quite long for this hyperhydration. Uh, and we use polychemotherapy rather than metotrexate alone. Um, the interest of rituximab that is standard in uh, systemic B cell lymphomas um, is not clearly established uh, in the disease with controversial results. We've had recently this phase three study uh, that showed uh, no benefit in terms of uh, PFS or OS um, uh, between uh, one arm with rituximab in red and one arm without rituximab in blue. Maybe there was an effect uh, for patients uh, in 30 to 60 years uh, uh, in PFS with uh, patients with rituximab uh, that seemed to do better. Um, on the other hand, we have the results of this randomized uh, phase two study uh, showing that um, in the arms with rituximab, the response rate was significantly higher than in the arm without rituximab. Um, so what uh, after, after uh, we've seen that uh, world brain radiotherapy alone was not efficient, metotrexate was the key drug. So uh, the standard treatment in the 19s and in the, 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 the early uh, 20,000 years was the association of high-dose metotrexate-based chemotherapy followed by consolidation world brain radiotherapy. And you see with median overall survival of about three to four years and uh, five-year overall survival much better than what we've seen with world brain radiotherapy alone. But with this treatment, there is high risk of neurotoxicity. As you can see in this patient treated 10 years ago uh, with this association, and we developed uh, progressively uh, dementia and gait disorders linked uh, to post-treatment with cancer, fatty, and cerebral dysfunction. If we look at this uh, more precisely, we can see that the risk of neurotoxicity increases in elderly patients. It is very important in patients aged more than 60 years uh, and it occurs very early in the course of the disease, whereas it occurs um, uh, later in patients, uh, in younger patients, and in um, a proportion, uh, not in a so high proportion. Uh, so that um, world brain radiotherapy was progressively abundant in elderly patients to do chemotherapy alone the high-dose metotrexate-based chemotherapy with uh, some efficiency uh, overall survival between 14 to 14 months to three years and uh, a correct uh, rate of uh, neurotoxicity. Um, alternative options of consolidation have been searched and the, the one that is most employed is intensive chemotherapy with autologous stem cell transplantation. It has first been studied 
at relax is um, recognizing this result. You can see the number of survival of uh, almost five years. Then it has been studied in first-line treatment, and we had recently the results of two randomized phase two trials with quite uh, the same design and high dose of exit based chemotherapy and then randomization with um, uh, one arm of um, autografts and the other arm of whole brain radiotherapy. Here are the results. Uh, so the PRESI trial for patients uh, under 60 year and the IELSC 32 trial for patients under 70 years. Well, in both uh, studies, both consolidations treatments were proven to be efficient. And in both trials, there was more neurotoxicity in the world brain radiotherapy arm. Um, in the PRESI trial, there were more relapses in the world brain radiotherapy arm, whereas it was not the case uh, in the IELSG trials. And in both trials, um, overall survival was not significantly uh, different in, uh, between both arms. Uh, so, uh, summary of specific treatment in clinical practice. Well, for patients, um, we divide between patient, patients older than 60 years, patients younger than 60 years. This age can be discussed, but we won't have time today for that. Uh, so, for the elderly patients, it is chemotherapy alone, which is an hydro metatrixid based chemotherapy. And for younger patients, this same chemotherapy followed by consolidation treatment it can be either wall brain radiotherapy or intensive chemotherapy with autograft. Uh, interesting thing is that uh, whereas uh, the usual dose for uh, wall brain radiotherapy was 40 grays in 20 fractions, there has been a, a publication of reduced dose radiotherapy with uh, 23.4 grays in uh, 13 fractions for complete responders with uh, quite good results and the prospective trial is ongoing on this subject. Um, the initial goal of the treatment is to obtain a complete response. There are international IPCG respir uh, response criteria based on four criteria. The, mo the most important one being brain imaging and as a definition of complete response in brain imaging is the disappearance of any contrast in instruments. Uh, once we obtain the complete response, it's very important to follow uh, the patients uh, quite closely initially uh, because there is a high risk of relapse as that occurs um, mostly early in the course of the disease, like in this patient. A few words on treatments at relapse. The first thing is always to consider rechallenging metotrexate in patients who have been good responders to metotrexate with uh, interesting published results. Uh, I won't talk much about other chemotherapy protocols or world brain radiotherapy always with the risk of neurotoxicity. Interesting thing is the uh, development of new drugs, uh, targeted therapies like imids or ibrutinib, here an example of good response for lenalidomib. And the development of immunotherapy, no much publication at that time, but um, might be interesting thing in the future with checkpoint inhibitors or CAR T cells. And the important thing is always to consider consolidation with autograph in fit patients responding to salvage treatments. Uh, the prognosis remains severe in the disease with frequent early deaths, frequent relapses, but there is a 40% of prolonged uh, survival, and um, especially uh, in younger patients. Here you can see the results of the French National Database on uh, more than 170, uh, 1,700 patients. Um, the most recognized prognostic factors are age and performance status. Um, so a summary on the disease. Uh, the disease mainly affects immunocompetent elderly and um, rather than immunocompromised patients uh, with non-specific clinical symptoms but with frequent disability at the diagnosis. We've seen the, the typical MRI features, but remember there are numerous uh, diagnostic pitfalls. Uh, try to do lumbar puncture and ophthalmological examination before biopsy. Uh, 
always histopathological diagnosis, but before using steroids and for treatment, high dose methotrexate based chemotherapy followed by consolidation with a whole brain or um, intensive chemotherapy in young patients and uh, chemosensitive tumors, but with frequent relapse and globally severe outcomes, but uh, 20 to 30% of cures. Well, thank you for your attention.